Welcome back everyone to Formula 1 2021 and welcome to your qualifying report for the Belgian Grand Prix. What a day. What a day guys. That was quite something in Belgium. Certainly a day for the history books and certainly it set up a fantastic race for the Grand Prix tomorrow. There are plenty of storylines to get through today, so spoiler warning is in effect for today's qualifying session. If you've not seen it, go and watch the highlights and then come back to this very video for all of the discussion. Spoiler warning out of the way. Here, it, it's not gonna look real, but it very much is. Here is your result for today's Belgian Grand Prix qualifying. Max Verstappen claimed another pole position in 2021, the only driver to beat the two minute mark in Q3. And though it was a pretty awesome lap from Max, the focus, the star of the show today at Spa was Mr. George Russell. Mr. Saturday, as so many of us call him. And not only has he got into Q3, not only has he beaten Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton, it's a front row start in a Williams for George Russell, the second of his career after the Sakia Grand Prix last year and the first for Williams since Italy 2017. An incredible result, well and truly deserved. And crikey, does that give us a spicy, spicy, spicy front row for the race tomorrow with Hamilton in third and Daniel Ricciardo getting his best result for McLaren in fourth. Oh, I, I just can't wait until the lights out tomorrow. I am so excited for this one. It's Vettel in P5 who had a great result at the end of the day. But of course, that huge incident involving Lando Norris, Vettel once again proving to all of us what an exceptional human being this man is. Gasly in P6, it's another great job. Another top six appearance again for the Gas man in front of Perez, in front of Bottas, a really good drive. But I think Gasly, like Vettel and like Ricardo, all of them, even Verstappen, they're all gonna be overshadowed by George Russell today. Sergio Perez, it's not great. Seventh place for Red Bull after that contract extension announced yesterday for 2022. Bottas in eighth is not what he needed when you consider George Russell, when you consider where Lewis Hamilton is, he's behind Verstappen, he's behind Perez, he's got a five place penalty. After that first lap incident in Hungary, he will start 13th behind Latifi and Sainz. And to top it all off, it was his birthday today. A day to forget, lots of work to do in the race tomorrow. Ocon is ninth, our race winner, last time out in Hungary. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it would surprise me if Ocon won again, but it wouldn't surprise me if we had another surprise winner in the race tomorrow, if conditions remain like they were today. And Lando Norris, we will definitely talk about that horrible, horrible crash at the start of Q3. I will certainly be talking about that as soon as we get on to our qualifying rundown. Norris in 10th rounds out your top 10. Leclerc is 11th, will move forward a place thanks to Bottas's penalty. The same is true for Latifi in 12th. That's a great drive. Another driver that will certainly be overshadowed by his teammate. Sainz in 13th, the final driver to move up a place thanks to Bottas's penalty. However, it wasn't a great day Ferrari in those mixed conditions. Alonso 14th will stay 14th, will start in 14th place and never really had the pace to challenge for Q3, was 14th at the end of Q1, settled in a similar position throughout Q2 and eventually was only able to beat Lance Stroll, who was unable to do a representative lap at the end of Q2 thanks to some poor timing, poor planning really, from the team and driver at the end of Q2. Giovinazzi beat his teammate once again in 16th place. Sonoda once again was out in Q1, really struggled in those wet conditions. Mick Schumacher, however, out qualifies Kimi Raikkonen, who really did struggle on a circuit he normally excels at, and Nikita Mazepin rounds out your grid. But as I mentioned just a moment ago, I want to start off our qualifying rundown 
with Lando Norris. It's 10th place for the British driver as it stands. However, a huge incident at the top of Eau Rouge at the very start of Q3 on the wet tyres, losing it through the kink at the top of the hill. And as a result, Lando involved in a horrible, a horrendous crash at the top of Eau Rouge, bringing out the red flag. And first things first, Lando is okay, but we have not yet had the full team statement on Lando's condition. And I would highly recommend you keep an eye out over on social media. It's not 100% clear if he will be racing or not tomorrow. From the statements and comments Andreas Seidel, team principal of McLaren's, been giving out following the incident, it appears Lando has some slight pain on his left elbow and that is the main cause for concern at the moment for Lando who's been moved to the hospital for precautionary checks but I don't want to jump the gun just yet and say he'll be racing or won't be racing so please 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 keep an eye on social media for any statement given by McLaren. Fingers crossed by the time this video reaches you guys we will have some more information but as it stands right now it's very unclear. A horrible, horrible incident and regretfully we are seeing more and more and more of these incidents at Eau Rouge at the moment. The track thankfully is more than aware of this. They don't want to see incidents like this any more than we do and thankfully already the circuit is looking into changing the top of the hill, making the runoff area on the left and right hand side of the circuit way wider, giving drivers much more room for error, but far more importantly, making the corner that so many people love. It's iconic for a reason. More importantly, it's making it far more safer without losing too much of the racing integrity. I'll leave Eau Rouge there for the moment because it's a huge talking point with so many different angles and it's one I would really enjoy talking to you guys about in the comments down below. Lando, Okay, but again, keep an eye on socials for that update. And I suppose whilst we're on the topic of McLaren, Daniel Ricciardo, who was struggling in those early stages and it was Norris who seemed like he was going to be fighting for pole, for Danny Rick to come out with fourth place is a really, really strong drive. We are all pretty much aware it's been a complicated start for Ricardo at McLaren. So to be in front of a Red Bull, in front of a Mercedes, to be starting on the second row alongside Lewis Hamilton, McLaren and Ricardo can be super happy with that result for Daniel. But just again, I think it will leave a bit of a sour taste knowing that Lando, of the two, has been way better in qualifying and they will just question what could have been today if things hadn't gone ahead at the start of Q3. For Max Verstappen and Red Bull Racing, P1, pole position, is exactly what they were hoping for. Perez in 7th? Well, technically he's done his job beating Valtteri Bottas. That's kind of his role this year. It's not brilliant and Sergio himself will know there was room for improvement. But when you've got conditions like this... Anything is possible and I'll always leave drivers a little bit of wiggle room in these kind of conditions. That being said, Max Verstappen did a really good lap and I don't think it's quite being talked about enough. I understand why. We've got a Williams in second place and George Russell was only four tenths off Max Verstappen. A little bit less than that actually. So I get why the focus is on George and Trust me, I cannot wait to talk about him in a moment's time. But I just think credit where credit's due to Max Verstappen with that skinnier wing than most people were doing, giving that little bit more top speed, being able to set competitive laps throughout the session. And George, of course, was the first of the drivers to get over the line on those final runs, set that purple, purple, purple lap to take in provisional pole. However, it was only Verstappen who was able to beat him. And Verstappen was way at the back of the queue. There's going to be benefits. There's going to be drawbacks of that with visibility not being so good, with preparation on that prep lap not being so good. Maybe traffic. I don't think there would have been on his particular lap, but certainly would have been in their mind, making sure they got over the line, got that lap ready. We know how good Verstappen can be in wet conditions and... He's got a great car. There's no denying he should have been in the battle for pole position today. But I wanted to show a bit of love to Max because 
In a session like that, that was just so bonkers all the way through with changing conditions all the time, any driver that gets it on pole deserves some credit. But of course, when you're in a Williams and you get second place, it deserves just that little bit more credit, doesn't it? My goodness. Well, I said earlier I was excited to talk about this. I've got here and I'm lost for words. A Williams in second place in 2021. When they didn't score a point last season, they hadn't all of this season until last weekend in those mad, mad moments in Hungary. And George Russell sticks it on second place and is just a few seconds, three tenths really, away from a pole position. What a legend. That is really one of the qualifying, I think it's the qualifying drive of the season. And undoubtedly, people will be asking about that Mercedes drive. That will be the focus of this. Of course, points are on Sunday. And I think that will be so exciting to see what he can do in the race. But also lap one. If we can see any kind of recreation of Hamilton and Vettel. But it's Russell and Verstappen on the opening lap tomorrow. And we've got Hamilton in the mix as well. My goodness. I don't want to get too carried away. I easily could. I'm that excited about this. But on the Bottas-Russell situation, if you had any opportunity to catch the Sky Sports interview, I'm, I know some of you don't have the opportunity to do that, but if you did and they might upload it on YouTube afterwards, speaking to Toto Wolf, that's a done deal. That is very much a done deal that Russell is moving to Mercedes. And after a performance like that today, with Valtteri Bottas, Two seconds, two and a half seconds off his teammate, off George Russell. Oh, and yeah, did, did I mention Russell was in front of Hamilton? Oh, I'm excited. I really am. And Latifi, who I think did a great job today in 12th. Yes, he had that moment in Q1 where he went for a bit of an excursion into the grass on those intermediate tyres. He's been well and truly outshone by his teammate today. But to just... Miss out on Q3, that's not too bad in a Williams either. And for someone who has never really done any sort of racing in Formula 1 in wet conditions, if you remember back in Imola, he was out on lap 1. I think that's a really respectable job. In front of Sainz, Alonso, Stroll, both Alphas as well. Credit again where credit's due to Nicholas Latifi. And Williams could be on the verge of something very special in the race tomorrow. Third for Hamilton is all right. It's okay. It's not the pole position they were hoping for. But they do have the slight upper hand in the driver's standings. And Hamilton will know tomorrow that's where you get the points. And Hamilton, with the wealth of experience he has had, not just in Formula 1, but starting at Spa, not on pole, and also starting on pole and understanding the ramifications of that, I think confidence will be pretty high in Mercedes. Not sky high. They won't go into the race tomorrow expecting to win, but they will know there is definitely an opportunity to do so and to have a great battle with Verstappen and hopefully George Russell in the race tomorrow. Bottas, I kind of mentioned it earlier on. This is not the result or the timing he needed. He's not traditionally the greatest in wet conditions. And I think we well and truly learned that today in qualifying two and a half seconds off Russell. Almost three seconds off the pole position time. Eighth place will turn into 13th behind both Williams Lots of work to do in the race tomorrow for Valtteri. Ricardo fourth, we mentioned that a little bit earlier on. And Sebastian Vettel in fifth, just like Gasly, the two of them. I think their results are really strong today, but will certainly go under the radar. Vettel, who of course got that second place cruelly taken away from him in Hungary. His confidence has been building and building over the course of this year. And Lance Stroll in that second Aston it's not worked out for him today. However, what I would say for almost all of those guys outside the top 10, really, your Leclerc's, all the way down to Schumacher and Raikkonen, anything can happen in these sorts of conditions. What tyres you start on, how quickly those conditions change. It's not over. It's not the end of the world. Look at what happened in Hungary. 
we could see very similar scenes in the race tomorrow, but no doubt Seb, a true sportsman when handling the Norris crash today, very vocal about being a red flag before the Norris crash even happened, a very deserving P5 for the four-time champ. And Gasly, who I quickly briefly mentioned there, it's another top six. It's a million percent got under the radar today. But I do think a storyline which could be quite interesting for tomorrow and for the rest of the season is Gasly's in front of Perez. We saw it with Gasly and Albon at the end of last season and now Perez has got the deal. Helmut Marco and Horner have said, Gasly, mate, if you thought at all you were moving to Red Bull next season, well, that's not happening now, fella. I just wonder. Maybe I'm reaching here a little bit, but I do think we've seen it in the past with Gasly. Yesterday, mad conditions. Don't read into it that much, but over the course of the race and the rest of the season, I wonder if that little bit extra fire will just be playing in his belly. A great drive from Gasly today. And Sonoda, who's getting the grips of Formula 1, out in Q1 isn't great because, again, compare it to Latifi, who's in a very similar position. Nicholas did a great job. Yuki, more work to do. Again, tomorrow, anything's possible, but it's going to be a difficult race for the Japanese rookie. Ocon, in ninth, is actually not a bad result for Alpine. Because they were really struggling in Q1 and Q2. Esteban just sneaks through our new race winner of 2021. Ninth place. I'm interested to see if they can hold on to that. Because I think if Norris does start the race tomorrow, he's certainly got a quicker car. And definitely looks very quick in wet conditions. And Leclerc, Sainz, I think they've got that a little bit more in that car over the Alpine this weekend. Especially if it dries up at the end of the race. And for Fernando Alonso, who's pretty much been 14th all day, every single session, he'll be wondering where that pace is and what he can do to somehow do a different strategy, try something a little bit brave to hopefully score some points tomorrow. And it's a very quiet day for almost all of the drivers out in Q1. Alfa Romeo 16th and 19th for Kimi Raikkonen. A disappointing weekend in Hungary where Williams overtook them in the standings and with Russell in second and even with Latifi in 12th, they'll be frustrated. And actually, on Haas, a team that have really, really struggled this year, I'm very surprised they didn't gamble a little bit more. It was Williams, the only team that went on the intermediates at Q1. And I think that bit of confidence, that little bit more experience on the intermediate conditions at that stage helped the both drivers, Latifi and Russell, get into Q2 and almost Q3 for the both of them. And I'm just a little bit surprised they didn't try and be a little bit braver considering their position in the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships this season. And that just about rounds out our field. Before we go, we'll quickly do ones to watch and first, your driver of the day. I don't really need to do it, do I? Mr. George Russell, second place. What a king this weekend. Miles in front of his teammate, almost nicked a pole position in a Williams. Come on, that is nuts. That is incredible. That is very deserving of driver of the day. And ones to watch tomorrow. Of course, I've put George Russell because generally I cannot wait to see what he's going to do. But I think Hamilton and Verstappen is going to be very, very tasty. And Valtteri Bottas, what? I've said it many races this year, haven't I? But what reaction are we going to see? Can, can Valtteri fight his way back through the field and prove to Mercedes what he's worth? Or does he know more than we do? Is that hunger, is that fire just dying down a little bit? We're going to have to wait and see tomorrow. Thank you all very much for watching. As always, if you are new, feel free to subscribe. I'll be joining you all down in the comments for a bit of discussion, a bit of juicy discussion after today's events. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.